everyone, it's your girl Brittany here and welcome to Brit Positive Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope everyone's having a wonderful week. To keep up with us here, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter and you can listen to us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple and Anchor. Now, if you're listening to us on YouTube, then click that subscribe button and notification bell as well to get notified to see when we have posted. And if you're listening to us on Spotify, Apple or Anchor, then you can click that follow button to join the Brit Positive Fan Bam and download this podcast so you can listen to it on the go. All the links are down below so you can join in spreading the positivity with us. Now for the Brit Positive quote of the day. Don't compare your life to others. There's no comparison between the sun and the moon. They shine when it's their time. I thought that was very encouraging and I hope that encourages you this week. So welcome back to another episode. As you already know, we're trying to do our every Monday for February in celebration of season three. And I could not do the celebration of season three without the one and only who I have so much fun with on this show, my brother, Andre. Welcome. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to have you here. Do you want to know what our our episode is about today? Because, you know, guys, I didn't actually fill him in. I just kind of like said, just join me. Let's have a conversation. Yep. So I was like "Eh, doing household chores and Brittany was like, hey, want to do a podcast? So I'm like, yeah, why not? (laughs) Exactly. I just grab him and I'm like, you're doing one. (laughs) But yeah, our episode is basically things you never knew. And I thought this was pretty interesting because we are in the year of 2022 and there's going to be so much happening that we don't know. But also, I feel in order for us to grow and mold into amazing individuals, it's always good to discover new things. It's kind of like going on a field trip. You know, when I was a kid, I didn't really explore anywhere, you know, on my own. It was kind of like school made me explore like I went to science museums and you know the zoo things like that to kind of like teach me all this other stuff that's outside in the world and I just thought it would be kind of fun to just kind of see what are things we really don't know out there that has been kind of kept a secret from me science museums like how black holes work or things like that well no there you know what I saw at a science museum was like this ball you know when you touch it and your hairs like get all staticky yeah. Oh, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. I remember that one. And I touched a brain. Let me tell you, those don't feel as cool as you think it would. It was like really solid. And, and they were telling me they're like, that's a human brain. That's a real brain that the person donated their brain for for kids to, to see what a real brain looks like. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I, I thought it was plastic, but it was real. But it was really hard and heavy. Brains are actually heavy, guys. So. Anytime you guys are like feeling it in your neck where you're like, oh, my God, I got to rest my head because my head's so heavy. It's because your brain is pretty heavy. Once again, it's one of those things I didn't know. Hey, there you go. And and it only it only makes you better. Dre. It only makes you better. So let's get into it. Things we never knew. All right. So for one, I saw here that sloth can hold their breath longer than dolphins. Is it because they move so slow? The way they do this is they slow their heart rates so they can hold their breath up to 40 minutes underwater. And dolphins, you know, need to come up for air about 10 minutes. Wait, a dolphin comes up every 10 minutes? Yeah. Well, why do you think we catch them? Like if we're out in the sea and we're like, oh, look, a dolphin. They were like, yo, we got to (laughs) breathe. So that's why we see dolphins. Yeah, but every 10 minutes? Yeah. And a sloth can 40 minutes, though, because they slow their heart rate. My thing is I never saw a sloth in water. So how do they know this? But hey, that's something we uh, never knew. A sloth knew. can fall off a tree and fall into a puddle. No, a no, not like that. Like, where do you discover sloths? If you guys know, please let me know. Because I actually, I feel it, like sloths are in Australia. Australia. Yeah. I'm pretty they? sure it's Australia. Yes, but they can hold their, their breath underwater for 40 minutes. Okay, so the next one we got is octopus have three hearts. Is that real? Well, is that a real thing? or? Yeah. I think I've heard that before. But I didn't know it was real. I just thought it was something made up. Nope, it's true. Octopus have three hearts. I'm wondering, though, why? Is it because octopus are, like, more than one living thing inside of them? No, no, they probably just have multiple hearts. I can't imagine having three hearts. But I feel like I wouldn't die so quickly because I would just have, like, two more to keep me living. (laughs) Okay, the next one I found interesting is elephants can't jump. I kind of thought they could because at least when they're babies, they I'm thinking they're lighter as a kid. They're but probably just too heavy. No, of course they're Conservation of mass and all. Yeah. And then, then, yeah. But elephants can't jump, you guys. So they can only stand, I think. Like, you know, I've seen some yeah. elephants stand on two feet, but never, like, jump. 
kind of reminds me of the Dumbo movie. How did Dumbo fly? You know, guys, I actually watched Dumbo, but I can't remember Dumbo. No, he had um, really big ears. And that's how somehow that's how he was able to fly. Do you remember the Dumbo movie? I all I remember was the crows in the Dumbo movie. That's basically it. That's really bad. If that's all, <laughs> it's like it's about an elephant, and you're remembering crows. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I can't remember anything else about it. <laughs> you're not helping me at all. I know. <laughs> okay, the next fascinating thing I found was polar bears have black skin. Now, when I think of polar bears, I'm like they're white. You know, you see them in the in the North Pole or something or the Arctic. And they look white to me, but their skin is black and their fur isn't actually like white. It's like transparent. So the white reflects, it reflects the light. Here's the thing. I went to the zoo long ago when I was a kid and it looked brown. Their fur looked brown to me. They look dark actually. Yeah. I've been to the zoo for like a field trip, right? Mm -hmm. And it was during the summer. Mm -hmm. And the bear, the polar bear did look a little brown. It looked brown. Yeah, that's where I was a bit disappointed in seeing the the polar bears because I was expecting it to look like super white, Mm -hmm. you know, but... um, I just assumed it was just that type of polar bear. So I'm like, oh, maybe this type of polar bear is a little bit darker shade. But if you're saying that the skin is translucent, it will always reflect of other things. It's like the ocean. Mm-hmm. It l- only looks blue because of how it reflects sunlight. Yeah. Okay, so the next one that you guys might have not known, or maybe you have known, I didn't know this, was ketchup was once sold as medicine. The condiments was prescribed and sold to people suffering with indigestion back in 1834. Were they actual doctors? You can't ask those kind of questions. <laughs> this is stuff we didn't know, okay? and It's a condiment. You know, I'm here thinking, guys, we got free medicine now. Well, it's not free. We still have to pay for ketchup. Did they but... not know what tomatoes were? But no, the ketchup is more than just tomatoes. It, it, yeah, no, they put a whole bunch of sugar in it, but still. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, that used to be medicine. Think about that. I don't know if I would have ketchup as medicine, though. I like it with my fries. Was it before the invention of fries? Well, it's thing. Fun fact, y'all. Now that you mentioned about fries, you know, it was made by a black man out of frustration at a restaurant. I remember the story. Yeah, he was like, the- someone was like, these fries aren't like, are too thick and stuff. And he like cut them so thin. Chips. Like chips thin and gave it to the person and like yeah started a whole revolution right there with potatoes and you know what's so fascinating you can do so much with potatoes oh, like yeah, yeah. so much and I, I i love that and it kind of just gives me an idea of like people like guys you don't know what you're made of you know look at that potato like it took a long time but over the time and course in life you see the different ways that a potato can be made i was about to say tomato but i meant potato, potato. and 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 it's the same thing with us humans. It's like we we are capable of so many things. We just have to take the time to discover it. Yeah. When you think about it, like potatoes are like God's miracle food with <laughs> all of the stuff that you can do with it. And it's not just like the obvious stuff. Like you you think of like mashed potatoes or fries. You can use it to make um, vodka. To make... Wait a minute. What? <laughs> potatoes? Yeah, yeah, you can use Andre, where alcohol. are you getting your sources? <laughs> that's, that's the question. It's like, all right, we're, we're going to do a, like a live Google right now. <laughs> <laughs> because I've never heard potatoes being used for vodka. Yeah, well, what's the thing? Let's see that. Yeah. That could be a name. It doesn't mean they use actual potatoes. Oh, no, no, it's actual potatoes. Can you make vodka from potatoes? Today, most vodka is made from grains and such as wheat though also use potatoes okay wow so it's true ladies and gentlemen (laughs) you can even get vodka out of those things so it's like we are made of a lot of stuff (laughs) you guys can do anything just put your mind to it and work hard as as we humans worked hard to use every possibility of a potato honestly i i would stop at fries i would only like tell people yeah guys you can just make fries with potatoes but now you got chips you got mashed potatoes you got vodka well you see i know there's I, I more have... i just can't name all of them right now <laughs> well here's the thing though i i've had my time where i'm just like i'm having a rough day so you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna sit down go to youtube and watch some people cook some uh, fabulous dishes yeah that's and a thing i've seen so many potato dishes oh my gosh with the most ridiculous stuff ever i'm like did he seriously make potato like pasta out of potatoes 
That's insane. I was like, wow, I wouldn't eat it, but <laughs> that was crazy. Next one got is space smells like seared steak. Who knows what space smells like? That's my isn't, question. Isn't the uh, space a vacuum? So there is basically nothing. So it would probably smell of nothing. I I never thought I, I've always seen space and just thought it was just this sky that's dark with stars when, and when planets. They, when they say space, are they talking about the dark, the black of Andre, I don't have the specifics. I'm not a scientist. But I will say I never thought of the question of what space smells like. Because then I'm there thinking, I guess it smells like air, but like tight well, or no, something. It, it can't possibly smell like air because it's a vacuum. There is no air. It's no one can smell space is my thing because oh, yeah. Yeah, because can. if you try, you die. I know, guys, this might sound crazy to me because like you guys might be like, how do you not know this? Brit? But no, seriously, I know this, but I'm just it's now starting I, I to get into my head. Something that you got from Futurama. No, no, no. Smell- the no, no, no. Thing from- but like, you can't breathe in space. <laughs> no, because it's a vacuum, yeah. No, but like, why? Like, we can breathe on Earth. Like, air is just here, but it's not out there. Oh, no. You see, you see it, like, th- there's actually who can a- make that happen? God, you know? No, no, no. Here's the thing. Like, air, what, what we call air, is a combination of different chemicals that circulates through our atmosphere. So it goes up and down, up and down through water rain things of that nature but for the most part it's a it's something that exists in our on our planet the oxygen nitrogen and all carbon and all the other type of molecules and stuff that comes from us breathing out waste products and sucking in oxygen and trees eat um using the carbon that we extrude oh that's true because we we are using trees to breathe so and vice versa here's the thing if we had no trees yeah we we would would we die die. and it's kind of the same if there are no humans because they would just have a whole bunch of oxygen and no one to suck up the oxygen so that's why it's like really important to populate the world no it's a balance is what i'm saying Okay. Too, too many humans, not enough oxygen. Well, speaking of breathing, I found this interesting. So this is another thing you guys may not know, and I actually try to test this out. So listen to this, Trey. You typically only breathe out one nostril at a time. That don't sound right. No, you do. Like you, it's you. So one goes in, one goes out, <laughs> one goes. No, in. <laughs> you might have just one working, and then it's until you block the other one, then the other one just be doing its own thing. But it's not both. It is, isn't it like one tube that just divides into two? Isn't that how your nose works? I may not be a doctor, but I'm pretty sure there's a big hole in my skull. Oh my that where that, the, the... I'm just saying, Dre. Are they saying that it's one pathway? It's just saying it's one nostril. One nostril bringing in air and bringing it out. I know we have two holes. Yeah. But it's one big hole going into our skull. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It, just... it, it makes mm. sense if it goes out both ways. It goes in both ways. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. I can't be the only one that's just like, no, nah, that don't sound right. <laughs> well, that is a fun fact that you guys may have not known. And if you are very curious to see the science between behind that, like Andre, you I, know where to I, go. I, Speak I to your s- doctor if they will, are willing to make time in explaining how the nose works. I'm too. a brother, not a scientist. <laughs> Cut me some slack. <laughs> Another one here that's like about our bodies is your blood makes up about 8% of your body weight. Yeah, that sounds right. I think that's kind of correct because, you know, you know, we got bones. There's a reason why it's called lifeblood. <laughs> so that's cool. I thought that was interesting because, like, sometimes we're going on the stale and we're trying to burn the fat on our skin. But it's like our blood. We need to burn that, too. I'm just kidding. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. If that's the case, people can bleed out and lose weight. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Oh my gosh. No, guys. No! Oh my goodness. That is horrible. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay. Um, <laughs> these things I never knew with my brother are just, are just terrifying him, you guys. I am so scared. <laughs> Another fun fact here is Fruit Loops 
are all the same flavor. Now, I didn't think this was true just because, well... Fruit Loop had different flavors, though? Well, because every time I had the green one, it tastes green. And everything else tastes... I don't know, maybe it's like a Jedi mind trick with myself where it's like, oh, the green must taste a little more minty than the others when, like, they're all the same. I don't know. To be fair, I don't don't think they have ever advertised it as different flavors. Just different colors. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) We're the ones who assume they taste different. I, I'm not even like I was. I remember, um, Brittany having it when she was younger. Like I in, didn't like it though. Like it. Like I only you, you, tasted. You had your phase when you would. I eat, didn't eat like. Fruit Loops. I didn't like Fruit Loops. Dre lie, lies lies yeah, lies right phase. now. I tried it, but it wasn't like give me Fruit Loops for days. I think it was more like honey, the Honey Nut honey? Cheerios. But then my mom no, stopped that giving was, that. That was like yeah, a was day for me. <laughs> that was like a day, man. You you you, you had like one box I and then you tried never Fruit it. Loops, Dre. I am going to stand my ground. No, I mean honey that. honey nut Cheerios, right? It was like a day. You had a little bit of it, and you're like, eh. okay, yeah, a little bit of it, but don't <laughs> a act, little, it, but don't act as if like that was my cereal back in the day. I think if anything, it was um Frosted Flakes. No. I, I was the frosted. Flakes I tried. Guy. To, I tried to eat frosted. Flakes. I was the frosted. I'm more guy. into cornflakes, though. Yeah, you, you you think a kid would prefer <laughs> yeah. the sugary cornflakes, <laughs> but not Brit. I love the sugary cornflakes. No, it just you don't want to start your morning Their food. <laughs> I, you don't want to start your. <laughs> you did not want it to be copyrighted. <laughs> <I> know, <right? laughs> No, I didn't want to start my day with sugar. Plus, I had Milo. I don't know if you guys back in the day, what did you guys have for breakfast? Because, you know, recently I've been oh, thinking. Man, that brings me back. I would love to have some Milo. Yeah, but I was thinking. Oh, it's basically just Caribbean it's, it's, hot like, chocolate. It's, cho- it's hot chocolate in the morning. <laughs> but, like, if you're having that plus in, like, a nice cereal, like, that, you know, you don't need two overwhelming sugars, you know. But I was. It's basically just a cup of coffee for kids. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't remember getting that much energy from it. I just felt energy Milo? as a, a whole as a kid. Like, I never felt tired as a kid. No, but you, you got to have Milo if you're like your condensed milk. And yeah, some- no, those. Yeah, of course. Like, it was it was blessed. I'm not taking that away. But I'll, I what I'm getting at is the fact that like there was a time. And I don't know if you guys remember, but we used to have like snack time and like, you know, breakfast and whatever before we go to school. Right. And I was thinking lately, I was like, oh, I would totally try like Fruit Lollops and Dunkaroos again, but then they don't even sell Dunkaroos anymore. Seriously? Well, not that I know of, but I I checked and they were like, so they, they kind of stopped. They stopped selling Dunkaroos. They stopped entirely? selling Dunkaroos. I didn't even know that. And I was like, why? It's chocolate chip cookies with chocolate. Well, was it like, oh, like, it's not healthy, so we're not selling it anymore? Is that, yes. is that what happened? So they made like the kids back in two thousands to go through the whole like sugar terrible stuff for us, and then the new generation, they're like, hey guys. We're going to do better with you. <laughs> and like, because they would, already failed you, us. <laughs> you would think that would sound better, though, but I don't know, man. What? Like, if it was like some of the stuff you see these kids eating, I'm like, it's supposed to be healthier, but is it, though? What are they eating? I see a lot of granola bars and um, fish but, crackers. Like, granola bars are, are surprisingly full of sugar. No, uh. They have like the nature ones, too. They're nature or nature. I don't know which one. I don't buy them, but they're the good, healthy kind. Okay. So I, I'm, I, not I'm attacking. Just, I've I'll, seen them. I'll, I'll kid, I've seen kids it. bring carrots and apples to school back Those in my day. I saw gushers. I saw fruit lollops. I saw ring pop. I saw nerds. You guys know what I'm talking about with nerds. I saw sour sour patch. They just, I saw they just flat out licorice. I saw chips, bear chips. Like we we had this yeah, whole sure. thing in sure. like snack time where it's like, okay, I'll trade you my gushers for your your ketchup chips, and like it was just real like playground like hustling back then, like for the good. The snacks. hustle was real back in the day. <laughs> like okay, I'm gonna give you three gushers for two lollipops. Like it was just no, there's yeah. no bartering. <laughs> I don't see bargaining now, especially no now. Yeah bargaining no bartering you're you're exchanging um goods bargaining of, yeah no no not bargaining barter bartering <laughs> oh my gosh okay this was really informative but wait at the same time i just don't know wait like, how am i supposed to know what space is like if i was to take off my helmet i'm like let me get a good <laughs> 
No. no. You know what you could do? <laughs> you could like trap the. I don't even want to say air, but the, trap there, the it, atmosphere. See what molecules no are in there in space because it's a void. You don't know that, Dre, because you've never been to space. How do you say that you know something even though you haven't experienced it directly? It's called not saying it at all. Speaking of space, now that we're back on that, when I was like over it, you're just like, I'm still wondering about space. Is How am I supposed to smell a vacuum? Is my whole fascination with aliens. You guys already know. Here we are. Uh, oh you know what? You don't have <laughs> to bring... The attitude, okay? No, this is Brit positive. <laughs> Let's continue, Brittany. Go. Yeah. Okay. So it got me thinking about like my first introduction to aliens. And I remember not knowing about aliens. Like it's kind of, it, I think my introduction to certain things is through movies, strangely enough. That was like my life growing up. So my first introduction to mermaids was The Little Mermaid. Cause like, well, yeah. You know what I mean? So for me, with aliens, it was Spice Girls when there was that scene where the, the aliens I'm, came I'm down sorry, and they were like, uh, wait, 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 I'm sorry. You you were saying, <laughs> okay, so the first time you have ever heard of the concept of extraterrestrial beings was Spice Girls. Because the, in the movie, movie, I am assuming in the movie, it shows the alien ship coming down. And they were like, oh, my gosh, what is this? What is this? And then the aliens were like really big fans of them. And they took pictures with the Spice Girls. Um, and I was like, oh, I guess that's a thing. Because if you see it in a movie, you're thinking, OK, it must <laughs> as a kid, it must have been real, you know, but but I guess not. And then my second movie to it to just kind of getting familiarized with the whole aliens was Lilo and Stitch. A lot of stuff that happens yeah. in space and then, you know, Stitch coming on Earth and things like that. And then afterwards, it was like scary movie. And then, yeah, Chicken Little. And those are those were my introductions. So I'm thinking about it. <laughs> and if I was to say, what was the earliest media that you saw aliens? Me right? or you? Yeah, me personally, right? When did and then there were it? actually aliens. Like, when did you when when were you introduced to aliens? Oh, let me guess. Star Wars? Um, because you know, I watching was, that, I was older then. I didn't. So when, when, I didn't think you know. It never hit me that these guys are aliens. <laughs> well, yeah. It, it, the joke is though that Star Wars took place in a galaxy far, far away. Yeah, and it just never. So it's probably it not even occurred. the Milky Way, our galaxy, right? It's called the Milky Way. It's probably not our galaxy. It's far away, maybe in, I'm drawn on a galaxy. Okay, or something. Bill Nye. Okay. At any rate, uh, <laughs> uh, what was it? I the first time that I can remember like watching an alien and knowing that this thing is definitely some type of extraterrestrial monster. Okay, what is the Simpsons? The Halloween special for stop. the Simpsons. You really need to stop. <laughs> I thought mine was bad, but yours is worse. <laughs> I remember too. A cartoon. Like, At least mine was real you people. Said Lilo and Stitch. No, I said Spice Girls was my first, so it was like. It gave me an idea like it could be real, not knowing there was men in them in those costumes. And and the and the joke is though they were kind of on point because these aliens came from Rancho Nine. That is technically you know what people would have said. What? I'm assuming people out there are gonna say E. T. And I never watched. We, I never fact, watched. It when I never I was watched E. T. I never yeah, watched it. Same here, actually. I never watched it when I was a kid. I don't know. And then everybody I, I will be quoting it like the... phone home. And I I know the quotes, guys, but I don't know the movie. With me, though, I, I know for a fact that I've watched the full movie Mac and Me, which is an E.T. clone, before I watched E.T. proper. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically an alien comes to Earth and they went to McDonald's. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's basically it. That's just the whole movie. They, they were hanging out at McDonald's. I don't know about you guys, but you guys got to <laughs> let me know. Do you guys still like think there's like a life form out there in space living? Because, you know... It's very <laughs> under <laughs> <Christmas> spring. <laughs> Just say no. <laughs> but no, seriously, if you guys, you know, think there is, please tell me what you think about that. Because um, it's pretty interesting. But also, I don't know, movies I know are just entertainment for people in a way to kind of just like 
distract themselves and stuff but aliens went from like being very interesting to me where it's like oh my gosh they're so like an unknown thing to like you can just make up any character because they made thanos you know guardian well, of the galaxy i should have taken it in that guardian of the galaxy is kind of like based on aliens in a sense but i never i never saw them as aliens i just saw them as just people with green or purple skin because they're civilizations right usually when you say aliens though we're thinking of like like creatures UFO. that are completely different from uh, no our ufo essence. when i think aliens i'm thinking ufo i'm thinking like like weird form of kind of coming down like war of the world that kind of a thing no that wasn't you didn't even see the alien that looked like a monster yeah but there were aliens though well i'm just saying that didn't look right to me i i mean yeah they are aliens in the war of the well, world's movie a but good alien i don't want to go off needs of that to be alien to us like they look human but they're not there's ah, that's a good alien just ask the movie alien <laughs> <laughs> you're terrible <laughs> but no like even that movie aliens I don't. I have not seen that, and I know they. You know, the alien came out of a guy's body, and I it, just it's never it's seen pretty it. stressful, man. You did, you watched I, it? Yeah, yeah, I watched the first one, Alien, mm-hmm. the one with Ridley Scott, and she was. Oh man, that, that movie was. And I was like, thirteen ish, thirteen fourteen ish. I and it, I think I I watched it. And I was like, oh man, I, I can't even finish it. Dang. No, I the only alien stuff is like cartoon or ooh, um ooh, actually, Jimmy Neutron. Nothing, you know, nothing. that that taught me about aliens too, even though he wished his parents would go away and then of course the whole Oh yeah, you're right. Jimmy Neutron Well, the way that they did it in Jimmy Neutron though, right, was kinda messed up too. No, I thought it was good because it was well, actually no, the aliens took Jimmy's parents to what, raise their alien kids or oh no to, to feed to, it to, to, to their their, their like mother alien, which is like a chicken. They, they, they said it multiple times it was a god which was like a big chicken which was even weirder <laughs> forget it like, they didn't need helmets to go into space so yeah was, yeah did that happen yeah that was a thing oh yeah because jimmy's always flying out of <laughs> and it wasn't as bad as that one episode where where carl was like hey jimmy how come we don't need helmets even though we're in space? And then you just hear him. No, no, no. no. I'm not doing it. No, it, you know, it, it wasn't Carl who asked him. Was it Carl? No, it was. No, sorry. It was Sheen. Sheen My bad. asked it was Sheen. him. And then Carl started singing about llamas. Yo, Jimmy Neutron is a good throwback uh, show, guys. If you have the time, just watch one episode and laugh. I was so salty when I first saw that. I was like, oh, God, I, please tell me, Mr. Science Guy. <laughs> But you know where I felt like I was actually learning true science was um Bill Nye. Yes. Anytime the teacher pulled that TV out with the VCR. And we're talking about the original OG Bill Nye. There's no. There's only one Bill Nye. Oh no, they did a remake not that long ago on YouTube. No. I don't think you watched it. Of course not. I'm not in school <laughs> anymore. I'm not in elementary school needing to do science. That's, that's what I was saying. It was the OG Bill Nye because I'm sure you never heard of the new one. No, oh, he's a me- Yeah, Bill Nye, he, he's still out there, guys. He's still doing his science thing. There might be a day, maybe in the year 2050, where we can just... I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Elon Musk, you hear, you, you hear my sister here? You gotta get going. We're going to Pluto. <laughs> I'm just saying. We could go visit planets. Like, you know how it's like... But it's just gonna be a lot of money. Well, like, we can technically go to the moon. Dre, it's gonna be a lot of well, money. Well, yeah, and like it's not gonna be commercial. In no, our but lifetime. I wanted to get to that point where it's like, hey, you guys want to, you want to like take your family to one of the the planets, and like we I can all visit that since the fifties. Like we can literally <laughs> fit inside a spaceship. Have like we don't have to go through so much protocols. Like it's it's like we take a ride to space. But then I'm They've hearing been literally saying that since the fifties. But doesn't it take like a couple of years to reach one planet alone? Like, it depends like because it takes... the planets move. So sometimes the Earth can be super far away from Mars. So you have to wait at a certain time where Mars's orbit is close to Earth's. Oh, see that's too much. So there's work, a good guys. Win- there's like a window period when you can travel between the two, and then after that, they're too far away to feasibly travel. Okay, but see with Pluto, what is it like? Just a rock? No, it's a demi planet now. So 
they are they classify as a dwarf planet. Oh yeah, that it is true. Wow, you know your science stuff. Mm-hmm. I keep up with these things. <laughs> you know, I have an app. <laughs> <laughs> You know how I learned my planets? Um, actually, yes, I do. Sailor I, Moon. Uh, she, she got me. <laughs> Literally, I know all the planets' name because. But I think that's such a creative way to like have kids learn the planets. Because if they were to make me learn it like just regular, I probably won't remember their names. But because, because Sailor Moon made it into a song like, Planet <laughs> Mercury, Planet. You, if anybody you was to ask. Planet How do Mars. I know my constellations? Yeah. Like the, the constellations in the sky? Like Sagittarius or um, Tauros or Gemini? Yeah, I don't know that, nor... nor You know, it's just the stars no. in the sky. They have they have different animals. And they use it for, like, um, fortune telling and stuff. No, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that, I, that, that's what I, I was, was thinking about. you were talking about some planet. I didn't know. I was like, no, that's no, not no, it, in it, the song. <laughs> no, it's just constellations, right? Yes, So yes. you say you know your planets from Sailor Moon. Okay. I know my constellations from Saint Sam. Okay. So it's like... <laughs> okay, it's like that's on you. I think... Ever. I just think it's how people learn things because, like, even alphabets or numbers or provinces in Canada. I learned that through a song. I don't know. Music is powerful. It helps you learn things faster. It just makes your brain like it's remember. It's a rhythm. Yeah. Okay. Going along with this with the whole space theme here. Did you guys know that there's an alien abduction insurance policy? There was a sucker born every day, apparently. <laughs> I mean, imagine like I I think the way I talk about aliens on this podcast, I think any no one would be surprised if I signed up for that. <laughs> so convinced like oh, we were like convinced i really believe in this stuff so who knows who knows another fun fact i i, I stand by my statement oh, okay. <laughs> okay the next one i got for you guys which is not space related this is just you know to sh- show some love to um the black inventors that are, have been inventing amazing things here uh, and especially in celebration of black history month we got the super soaker I thought this was actually interesting because I just told my brother some time ago that I wanted to like buy one like well not a super super soaker soaker it's a nerf gun gun. it was a nerf gun but still it fall in the line of like this whole like plastic thing shooting out stuff right is it a super soaker or a water gun yeah I I remember I think you had one and you had to pump and then and then you can spray water just based off the air yeah yeah so it is a water gun yeah yeah yeah. um it's it was invented by this guy Lonnie Johnson um And I think he created like a really good summer for a lot of people out there because, I mean, when you we think of it, when we go back to our childhood, <laughs> super circles were like everything for water fights. Because yeah, think about when you have water fights, the most we had was like either a super soaker or water balloon. Yeah, true. That's true. You know, so I, I want to give him props. That's really cool. And if you guys didn't know that, yeah, Lonnie Johnson, another interesting inventor. He made traffic lights alongside with two other men, but it's Garrett. Augustus Morgan Sr. I I would like to say um, I'm going to end the podcast here. Thank you guys so much for listening. And I just hope this podcast inspires you guys to be inventors, you know, be creative, um, be open to trying new things, learn new things, you know, because it just shows us as people we are capable of many things. We are very talented people. And I encourage you guys to use your gift, whatever it is, whether it's encouraging people, being kind or making something to help one another you know or creating a business to employ more people or you know giving to people to help their lives anything to just kind of make society grow and and flourish into the best society that can be out there i encourage you guys to do that and especially with these black inventors they really did and they made such a beautiful impact on in the world actually and so now it's like we just gotta continue that that impact because like they they were hungry i feel they were so hungry for change and they just like created stuff like even a black person i I don't have the name but you can find it um invented the iron board and i mean when i look back on it that thing's very handy Mm -hmm. it's very handy so like i said you guys take the time discover what is out there what is something that you didn't know and use that knowledge and hold on to it and let it inspire you to be you and do something amazing in this world as well okay 
But thank you for listening. Please tune in next Monday for a podcast. Thank you, Dre, for joining me. This was really fun. Glad you problem. came. And you guys, I hope you enjoy this little fun podcast we did. Have a good one and see you next time. Bye.